Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back to talk about contrast paints once again. I've been tinkering with the new paints from Games Workshop again, and like before, I'll be demonstrating some of the things I've found. Based on your suggestions from last time, this video is being dedicated to metallics and how contrast paints can work when applied over the top of them, so let's jump straight in. I started off with the simplest method, applying contrast straight from the pot over a base coat of lead belcher. I used some pterodon turquoise to see if I can create that cool looking metallic Alpha Legion colour. As you can see, the application worked pretty much the same as it did over the other primers I've explored so far. It added a richly coloured layer over the armour surface that flows into the recesses while simultaneously pulling away from the hard edges, creating some rough edge highlights. As far as application goes, it's no different from when I've used contrast on other base coats, but the translucency of the paint is much more pronounced this time, mainly because I was applying over metallic rather than a neutral colour. The effect is a rather pleasing metallic green. The application was a little patchy in places and probably not as smooth as applying a dedicated coloured metallic paint, but for simplicity's sake, I'm quite happy with the result. So next, I wanted to see how other contrast paints worked when applied over metallics. My first thought was the bluish silver Grey Knight Steel Airbrush paint from Forge World, and I wanted to see how I could replicate it. I opted to use some of the bright Talisar Blue. However, if I had applied it straight from the parts, the blue would be much too intense. So I mixed in some of the contrast medium in a 50-50 mix of Talisar Blue to medium, and applied the resultant mixture over a lead belcher base. The effect that was created was much more subtle than the straight from the pot application and gave the metal a slight blue tint. The thinning also helped to reduce the uneven application that we witnessed with the pteridone turquoise as well. So how did it stack up against our target Grey Knight Steel? Fairly respectably I'd say. I probably could have gotten away with a little less medium, but as a proof of concept we can safely say that as a subtle glazing agent, contrast paints work pretty well. Now that I tried contrast thinned and straight from the pot, I decided to try just a few different colours and see what the results would be. I began by applying some neat black Templar over the lead belcher, which created this blackened steel effect. I would say that this result is darker than if I'd used normal oil for example, and has created a dark metal appearance that is currently unavailable as a standalone paint. Possible uses for this could be a slightly different take on Death Watch armor, or some dark iron in Age of Sigmar. Next, I tried some snakebite leather, which turned out to provide an excellent way to create bronze. The contrast paint created browns over the surfaces and in the recesses, whilst giving the edges a slightly yellowish hue. I also took this opportunity to apply some ethermatic bloom into a couple of the recesses, which created a fair impression of verdigris forming on the bronze surface. This would have some great uses on statues and other scenery pieces. Following on from the bronze, I wanted to see if I could create other metals by using contrast over lead belcher. The first of these attempts involved using some of the brownish yellow of Nasdreg yellow to create the appearance of gold. The result wasn't quite as good as snakebite leather, but it gave a fairly respectable gold appearance. Next was my attempt at copper. Here I used some Griffhound orange, which gave a very orange coppery colour. The intensity of the orange was probably a little too strong here, and if I were to tackle it again, I would have opted to thin it slightly first. But we're not here to only discuss the already well-known applications of contrast paints in speed painting, so let's try out some contrast paints in an airbrush. I added some Blood Angels Red, easily my favourite of the range, to my airbrush and created a 50-50 mixture of airbrush thinner and contrast paint, and turned down my compressor to around 20 psi. I then lightly sprayed the mixture over a model base coated in Retributor armour, building up the colour slowly over several layers. Straight away you can see how the airbrushing changed the properties of the contrast paint. Rather than spreading across the surface of the model, creating highlights and shading, it instead worked more like how a normal paint would work through an airbrush. However, it still retained the richness of colour and the slight transparency. Much like my earlier applications over the silver, you could still see the metal paint beneath slightly, creating this candy red appearance. Once the contrast paint had dried, it was still slightly glossy, but I wanted to push this further and apply some gloss varnish over the top. The result was a rich and glossy metallic red, perfect for Heresy Era Thousand Suns. Now whilst I've airbrushed over a metal base here, there would be nothing stopping you from doing the same to other base coats. In fact, I would probably think that this works exceptionally well over some Zenithal highlights. 
However, if you were to spray it over a solid non-metallic base coat, the result might not be too different than if you just use a regular paint, but it's going to be great for kind of adding some quick glazes to your models. And so that concludes another contrast experiments video. Let me know if there are any techniques you would like to see me try out with contrast, and I'll do my best to cover them in some future videos. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support my channel and help me to continue making and improving on my videos. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.